start. Hi, everybody. This is Mickey Vandaloo, uh, GPC. I'm the president of Lakeview Consulting. Um, a longtime member, well, I shouldn't say longtime member, but a member of the GPA since 2013 and uh, now act as the vice chair of the Grant Professionals Foundation. I'm the scholarship committee chair and uh, as it pertains to today's webinar, I am the leader of the mentoring task force and um, I'm very pleased to be presenting this with Amanda Paveglio. And Amanda, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. And um, I think the next slide has our, our beautiful faces on it. Mm -hmm. um, there we are. Okay. So, yeah, um, my name is Amanda Paveglio. I have been a member of GPA for, I think, two and a half years now. Um, I work for the Lancaster Lebanon Intermediate Unit, which is a educational support agency located in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And um, I've been a member of the Mentoring Task Force since its inception. I am in kind of a remote part of Pennsylvania, and I don't have a chapter uh, locally to me. So when I started my job, I was really hoping to, to find some mentoring. And um, when there was an opportunity to help build a system to help me get that, that was very interesting to me. So and just a little bit about me. Yeah, and that's a really good point, Amanda. Um, just really quickly, I. I in my progression through the grant uh, profession, um, I have I have had wonderful mentors, and I'm really looking forward to getting this program out here to make mentoring more available as an awesome benefit of being a GPA member. So I think we can get started. I think so. So um, what we're going to talk about today, uh, here's just a, a quick agenda, and it looks like a lot of points. Um, these are going to flow together really nicely. So um, Mickey and I just want to talk about the program development of the mentoring program to date, you know, how it started and where it's at now, some of the goals of the program, and why GPA wants to have it going. Mickey, are you typing? I'm not typing, no. Robert okay. Somebody's typing. I don't know. Somebody's who's typing. Somebody's typing. I can hear that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Yeah, um, Barb, I don't know if it's possible to mute everybody but me and Mickey, but that might be helpful right now. Yeah. Thanks. Um, we're going to talk about benefits for mentors and for the GPA overall, and then we're going to talk about mentoring versus coaching because this is a very um, important point that we want to make sure we're executing properly in this program. Um, and then, you know, if you're going to be a mentor, what's it, what might it look like? What might it look like in terms of um, reporting requirements? How are you and your mentees going to find each other? What kind of supports are we going to offer? Um, and then an, a timeline and some next steps. And we'll have a period for Q&A in the middle or towards the end, but I think we've also got a pause built in for, for questions about halfway through. So that's our journey for today. So this is just a real quick recap of um, how this, this has been built out. So the task force was built, was created back in 2016, um, shortly shortly after the 2015 conference, because there was a discussion then about, should we have mentoring that I attended? And um, I think, Mickey, you were there as well. So the task force grew out of that discussion then and, and the people who were who were there. Um, the task force was created to grow a program that will help mentors and mentees grow professionally. And so Mickey and I and other members of the task force spent spent most of 2016 kind of talking about this and trying to visualize what it might look like and how would it best serve member needs. And so we had a program design um, mostly basically approved by the board in September 2016. Um, we had a Mentoring 101 discussion then at the 2016 conference, that was this past November, where we rolled out all of our thinking to date, and we got some really valuable feedback out of that that um, caused us to just take a step back and, and think about a couple a couple concerns that were raised, um, in particular the the question of is it mentoring or is it skills coaching? What's the difference? How are we? Where are we going to put the dividing line? That was a that was a big concern. So we've spent some time since then really refining that and trying to build some more infrastructure so that when we launch this program, 
it'll launch strong. And I think we're just about ready to launch it for real. Now we're about four, three and a half, four months out from the 2017 conference, and we're hoping to get some people into the program between now and then so that we can continue to hype it at the 2017 conference as well. Um, Mickey, anything you want to add to, to this slide? Um, no, other than the fact that we, um, we just really wanted to make this program of maximum benefit to the members, and I think the reason why we paused after the 2016 conference was because there were a lot of questions, and they were questions that we didn't have great answers for at the time, and, and we were able to bring somebody, uh, a couple people onto the task force that really, really helped us in the last year, um, define our program, make it more valuable, um, and then we brought on some tools that you're going to see too. But there's there's been a lot of work on this program, and I, I really credit the task force for putting the effort into it that they have. So the goals for the program overall, um, really we want to make sure that our, our members have mentoring support to help them solve their career challenges within the grants profession. Um, we're, we're thinking this is going to help grow membership and retain membership, um, and that the program will help cultivate and maintain relationship between grant professionals, you know, regardless of geography, regardless of what kind of arena you do your work in. And this is going to just help enrich and strengthen um, our profession as a whole. Um, you know, we kind of want to keep these outcomes broad, um, and we really want to focus it on helping people um, grow in their careers, not so much learn how to do their job, but grow in their career advancement and, and their career arcs. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the benefits, because everybody, you know, obviously, um, all of you that are looking at possibly becoming mentors, and, and we truly hope that you will consider this opportunity. Um, there, are, there are a lot of benefits, um, but you know, everybody's what's in it for me, so we're gonna talk about that. Um, provide a way, I think that one of the main benefits for mentors in this program and, and the way we've designed it, it really provides a way to give back to GPA. Um, I know, um, I'm, I'm very, I think, I think we're all very lucky to have an association that supports our profession as much as GPA does. Um, and the members of GPA, I, say, I can say easily by far, are the most giving people that I've seen anywhere. Um, so I, I really believe, though, this is a way to give back. Um, and it's, it's a way that also it encourages you to share your experience and knowledge. Um, I know a lot of people on this call and people that might be listening to this later probably have some very valuable experience in different areas of the grant profession and, and have a lot of knowledge. There are some people though, however, that belong to GPA that don't have that experience, that don't have that knowledge. And so this is a really great way to transfer some knowledge and, and transfer your experience um, and help less experienced grant professionals. And a third benefit is that it really fosters new relationships. Um, I There were a couple of my mentors that I barely knew when they were mentoring me, and they mentored one mentored me through the GPC process. One just mentored me into the grant profession, literally um, said, "I think you would be really good at this." Uh, joined GPA and gave me some some great um, input, and um, I, I I have great relationships with those people now. So I think um, and relationships, as we all know in this business, are really really important. Um, I think we all can support each other and help each other, even do business with each other. So I think there's a lot of relationship um, building that can happen, and this is another way to do so. Also, um, if you're a GPC, um, mentoring will also count toward GPC maintenance points. Um, this is something that if, um, if you are a GPC and maybe you're a new GPC, um, your yearly certification requires you to get 105, 105 points. Yeah. Remind, uh, requires you to get 105 points. So you can get up to 20 points by being a mentor. So um, on the professional development side, you can get one point per hour of instruction. So uh, workshops such as this, um, any kind of educational classes, coming to the discussion deck or the meetup at the conference, um, all those things are professional development. And then serving as a mentor, um, you would get one point per hour of direct mentoring contact and one point per three hours of reading or prep to enhance the mentorship experience. 
Um, so some ways for you to get GPC maintenance points, and, and that might be something that just is really appealing to some people that want to become mentors. I think the benefits to GPA are, are equally as important as the benefits to members and the benefits to mentees. I mean, obviously the mentees are going to benefit for, from having that knowledge and experience and having that connection with somebody within the profession. And I just talked about the benefits for mentors, but the benefits for GPA, um, I believe one of the biggest things is, is this conveys to members that GPA is willing to invest in its members and not only through conferences and um, professional development. Now, now we're taking another step. They're investing in terms of connecting their members. And the Grand Zone, I think, has been a real great start to this. Um, I see a lot of great conversations happening in the Grand Zone community. Um, I think that this, but this investment is just going to keep going. And I think the mentoring program that they are investing in, I mean, this is a financial investment, um, is a, an example of the willingness that GPA is is investing in its members. Um, I also believe for GPA, this will foster more loyal members, um, which can then lead to increased membership and increased membership retention. So, uh, like we talked before, uh, GPA will be able to get more mentors, and they will be able to retain members. Then um, it'll also foster some leadership skills, which can be valuable for GPA because then those people can act as leaders within the organization. And I think that's a really, a really big thing that we're focusing on right now. Being um, on the executive board of the of the foundation, we're always looking for great new members, or great new leaders that can act on the boards and lead the boards and lead committees and that type of thing. And I think um, this mentor community um, can foster some of those leadership skills that are needed within GPA to help keep the organization strong. Um, another benefit is that it encourages uh, mentees growth. Um, from passive, somewhat passive uh, GPA members. Um, there are some people that just don't want to become, um, you know, don't want to be leaders, but they may want to help promote somebody's growth to a leadership position. So um, maybe it's somebody that kind of sits on the edges and maybe volunteers here and there. Um, maybe that's the mentor and the mentee has a desire to be a leader within the organization. And maybe this passive GPA member um, knows how to do it and can help that person do it. So we saw it, it being a way for leadership development. And then just overall pro promoting a sense of cooperation and harmony um, within the organization, which I think we all um, we all enjoy about GPA. Um, one thing that we are very challenged with in GPA is the geographic dispersion of our members. So um, this is another way to create relationships um, and even and even virtual ones, but create deeper relationships in a very geographically dispersed membership. So, uh, Amanda, did you, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Um, I guess the only other point I would add would actually have been on one of the prior slides, and you don't need to go back, but the, um, the idea of a benefit to our mentors. I know I work in the educational arena, and I hear over and over, and I, I have lived this as well, that anytime you have to help somebody else work through a situation or reflect on what they're doing, it helps you too because it also kind of makes you look at how you're doing your things. And anytime you have to explain something to someone else, it's a learning experience for, for you as well. So um, I think just a you know an, an additional benefit to uh, anyone who's serving as a mentor is that um, it's going to it's going to provide them an opportunity to reflect on their own practice in the grants profession a little bit. And maybe um, when they take that step back, they'll identify some things in their own work that they can improve upon or expand upon as well. Yep, that's a great point. Okay. Okay. Your turn. So um, I think we alluded to this earlier. One of the biggest questions that came out of the discussion then at the 2016 conference was the, at that time, it was a very blurry line between how we were defining mentoring and how we were defining coaching. And uh, the biggest, one of the biggest reasons why the task force wanted to kind of wait and make sure we got this right is that we wanted to 
further clarify that point. So Mickey, if you could go to the next slide. Um, one of the biggest things that came out of that discussion then conversation was there were several people present who were fairly seasoned grant professionals and they were interested in becoming mentors and as we were presenting our, our thoughts and what we were thinking so far, um, some, some hands went up and they said, well, you know, in, as part of my work, I already do some of these, these coaching things that you're talking about, but I, I, I charge my clients for that. Um, so if I were being a mentor, would I have to do those same things, but for free? And we kind of went, ooh, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> um, so I will say that what, what this table shows is not an exhaustive list of the differences between mentoring and coaching, but everything that's on the mentoring side of this is really more about professional development and advancement. Um, you could think about it more of a big brothers, big sisters maybe kind of a relationship as opposed to a teacher-student kind of relationship. You're not going to, as a mentor, you're not going to be teaching somebody how to do federal grant applications, or you're not going to be teaching somebody how to study to become a GPC. But you may act as a sounding board as they move through their struggles of dealing with a federal grant application and maybe direct them towards a resource that could help them over a speed bump or direct them to an, uh, another contact inside of GPA that you know from your professional network who could help them with a particular question. Um, it's really about um, mentees will have less experience than mentors in different ways, and the purpose of the relationship is to help the mentees gain experience, not so much gain a skill set. Right. So, um, you know, we've also shown here that coaching can address personal and or professional skills development. Um, we don't want really the mentors to be dealing with personal stuff quite so much. You know, there may be, especially if someone's trying to get a, a, a consultant business started, they may want some resources about how to rebalance their work-life balance, but we're not asking anybody to, like, deal with anybody's personal issues. Right. <laughs> so I just wanted to put that out there as well. Um, we are, um, and we're going to get to this a little bit later in this webinar, um, there is a library in Grant Zone of resources for mentors, and we're going to be populating that. We've already started to populate that with additional printed resources and webinars and things to help further clarify the difference between mentoring and coaching. Um, but if your, your big takeaway for today should really just be that it's about growing somebody within the profession. It's not about teaching them how to do their job. Right. Anything to add on to that, Mickey? Um, I, think, I think the only thing I would add is um, on the coaching side, typically you have very formal um, plans, like coaching plans. And while we want you to work with your mentor or mentees to establish goals and maybe um, share progress to those goals, maybe the goal would be to get their GPC or their goal would be to um, start a new consulting business or something like that. It doesn't require that formal documentation that normally is required in coaching. Um, so I think that's another, it goes into that um, instructional versus, versus nurturing. This is really more you're going along with them and walking along with them, not mm -hmm. leading them. And I Good think that's, point. And that's probably one of the, and, and all of us, by the way, on the task force have really learned a lot about mentoring from this last year um, because um, we've gone through these discussions a lot, so I think you'll find the resources very, very valuable um, on the Grant Zone community. So uh, with that in mind, we have set up uh, basic guidelines for um, how, you know, who, how you could qualify to be a mentor, how you could qualify to be a mentee. Um, so what we're seeing here are the basic guidelines for the role of mentor within this program. We ask that everybody be a member of GPA. That's true for mentors and mentees. This is a member benefit, so we're not, we're not making this available just to the, the general public in the grant world. Um, everything that's done needs to be done in accordance with the GPA Code of Ethics. We've, we've 
put here have five years experience in the grant profession as an employee or a volunteer. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have spent five years doing grants. You know, if you've spent other time in the nonprofit world and you have been, you know, part of a grant planning team, um, you have observed other people doing grants and have, you know, learned alongside them from that. Uh, we, we, we want you to, mentors, to have um, substantial experience. Um, we're, we're willing to flex a little bit on the five years. Um, we're, we're more thinking about the quality of experience than quantity. Right. Um, but we thought five years would be kind of a decent rule of thumb. Um, they also don't need to be consecutive years, just right. an, as a, an aside. So um, we need mentors to be willing to share their experience and provide mentoring in one or more of the GPC competencies and or grant consulting business practices. Um, it'll be up to a mentor to make first contact with their mentee. And we do have um, a matchmaking system in place that we'll describe in a few minutes that will definitely um, do a lot of the work for you on that. Um, it'll be up to the mentor to help um, set a schedule and maintain regular contact, hopefully minimum of once a month with their mentee. You can by all means be in touch more often than that, but uh, especially if it's a relationship uh, across a, a, a largest distance, um, you know, different time zones, that kind of thing. Um, it's very easy for that relationship to kind of fizzle out if you're not in touch with a person at least once a month. And the mentor needs to keep a log of meetings um, in some way, shape, or form. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. For our mentees, um, we require mentees to also be a member of GPA and to uphold the code of ethics. Uh, mentees need to be currently employed or volunteering in the grant profession. Um, we don't want someone to be mentoring somebody who's not doing grant work. And um, we need them to be willing to make a one-year commitment to the relationship with a three-month getting acquainted period to help determine uh, whether you, know, you, you all can work together or not. Mm -hmm. And obviously, those that's also commitment on the mentor part too. It is a one-year commitment to oh, both true. with a three-month getting awaited, getting acquainted, God, getting awaited, getting acquainted period. Um, I, I think that we thought that three-month period was was very important because um, even though we've gone to great lengths to select great tools to com to pair mentees and mentors, we understand that it just might not be a match and. Um, so we want to give the opportunity to um, have people try it for three months. Um, but then if it works out, we really wanted people to commit to that year long, to at least a year, um, because we don't feel, we really didn't feel as a task force, and after doing the research, we really didn't feel that it was, um, if it would have been shorter, it wouldn't have been enough time to really make substantial changes and to really make a relationship happen um, with a monthly um, with a monthly meet, you know, it's that's 12 meetings. So um, we thought that was probably enough to, to make a meaningful impact on the mentees. So um, that was very, that was thought out long and hard. And um, so it is a commitment for both the mentors and the mentees. Um, okay, um, I guess, Barb, are you collecting questions or is there a way for us to take questions? Or I thought we maybe would do just a really quick pause here. Um, so far, there are no questions in the chat box, um, but if you do have a question, you can type it in there, or if you raise your hand, I can unmute you so that you can ask the question. I think somebody raised their hand earlier. I saw something on that. Yeah, that we're, I should put that down. That was a, that was a different problem. So that's okay. 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 Well, if we don't have any questions now, we will, uh, as Amanda said, when she went through the agenda, we will um, take some at the end. So um, put them in the chat box and then we can answer those at the end. But we, I just wanted to give everybody a chance here in the middle of the presentation to ask. Okay, um, so I guess everybody's probably wondering at this point, what does this look like? Um, how are we gonna do mentoring? And again, we do have this, um, this challenge of, of geographic dispersion, but um, I think we have real opportunities to still connect. So we, we 
are not saying that discussions have to happen in person. We know that's probably not going to be possible. Um, really, the, the connection is going to be as much based on um, the, the compatibility of the experience or what the mentor, what the mentee wants and the mentor can provide than geographic location. So to us, the quality of the relationship is more important than the geographic location of the two people. Um, but it can happen in person. Um, you can, you will be able um, in the system that we have to say where you are. And um, I think it's very reasonable to say, especially if you're in an urban area, there may be somebody in your town that's a mentor and that would be wonderful. Um, and this would just be an opportunity for you to connect. So it can happen in person, but more often I think it's gonna happen by phone, um, maybe by Skype or something like um, a video conferencing um, application like BlueJeans or Uber Conference or, or one of those or WebEx. Um, so um, there's lots of opportunities for video conferencing now, which I, I would really highly recommend. Um, it's nice to be able to see the person you're talking to. Um, it is a little annoying that on video conferencing there's that delay, but um, I think if you know how to deal with that, then it, it isn't nearly as bad. So uh, Amanda put in a cute little cartoon here. Um, we don't want anybody to say, okay, so, and with, you know, cobwebs on the goals, you know, they haven't talked for four months. We do want regular meetings. We want every, when you talk one time, you should be able to remember what happened the last time. So, um, Amanda, do you have any um input to that? I don't at this point. Um, okay. That little picture on the left kind of reminds me of Lucy on Charlie Brown. You know, she had her little, the doctor is in thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, again, on the what might it look like, the time commitment, because I know this is something that a lot of people probably have a question about. And we did not this, want this to be a burden on grant professionals because we know everybody has deadlines and we know everybody is extremely busy, especially during certain parts of the year when certain types of grants come out one after the other. Um, so um, the typical time commitment as we saw it, um, again, we are asking for, um, in this summer, there's gonna be this two to three month mentor orientation and training period. So we're basically asking everybody, if you are interested in being a mentor, go in, we'll tell you how to do this at the end, but we're asking you to go in and sign up on, on the, uh, the uh, mentor match community, sign up as a mentor, and then you will have access to the community um, so you can ask questions. You'll have access to the resources in the mentor community and in the um, mentor match community. And so this is kind of a training period. Um, we will not get any mentees until we have 10 mentors signed up on Mentor Match. We really want to have a good um, cadre of mentors before we ask mentees to join. So we can ensure that we have at least as many mentors as mentees. We do anticipate, by the way, that there are going to be more mentees than mentors. Um, that a lot more people have been asking for this service for them than have been saying they want to be mentors. But I have had a lot of um, interest, even from my own area, from my own chapter, um, people that are interested in being mentors. So this is kind of the mentor orientation and training period. And then um, we are asking you, once you do get linked up with a mentee, we are again asking you for that one year mentoring relationship, including the three month getting to know you, getting to know you period. Um, we have some events in the, uh, in the next few months. We have the orientations that will happen and that we'll have folks continuously putting um, articles and resources and everything on that community. So I think you'll find that very beneficial. We do ask you to meet with your mentee either in person, by phone, by Skype, or some video conferencing at least once a month on a regular schedule. We are also going to have a mentor mentor mentee meetup at the GPA conference. Um, I believe it's on Friday afternoon, and um, that'll be in the agenda. And, and, and if you do sign up to be a mentor, please um, join us for that. That's a place where you are going to be able to meet, hopefully meet your mentee face-to-face -face out in San Diego. Um, you will have um, some additional prep time for mentoring sessions. Um, we were thinking, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking maybe an hour ish a month might be enough. I think it's more just documenting what happened the last meeting, um, which you probably will do right after your call. And then in the log, which is the log is simply a piece of paper. Um, it just says, here's the date and time that we met and here's what we talked about. Um, we do ask everybody to keep that log. 
Um, so keeping that log, you know, that's a few minutes to just jot down some notes um, from your call and then um, and then have your um, and then also prep for the next meeting. So you'll probably for half an hour or so before the meeting, maybe say, OK, this is what we talked about the last time you'll review your log. And you'll say this is what we need to touch on this time and then the mentee will also have things that they want to talk about so um, we also ask uh, the mentors and mentees we're going to ask everybody to do a six month and 12 month evaluation um, we're all grant writers and we know of the importance of evaluation um, and these are very valuable because this is kind of a pilot period for us this is um, we're putting this out there and we are uh, completely open to the fact that we're we may need to change something But we're looking for the mentors and mentees to give us that information And so, just yeah, and just on that that's that's not an evaluation of your mentor And right. it's not mentees providing evaluations of their mentors or vice versa This is more of a program evaluation mm -hmm. at the sixth and 12 month mark. So how's it going? Are we providing you enough supports? What could we do better? Right. Um, right. So that that's the nature of those evaluation questionnaires, and when we when we aggregate those, that'll help us uh, determine what whether we stay on course with the program as it's designed, or do we need to make some adjustments? Right. Good point. So as I said, there's really very little reporting. Um, you have the log of calls and meetings, and then the evaluation forms, and each of those things should be very very quick. So. Um, not much in the way of reporting at all, um, which we really wanted to keep the burden off of the mentors as much as possible. We want the focus to be on that relationship, not on reporting. Um, we want that the focus of this program to be um, you and your mentor, and and that's it. And I think you were supposed to do that one, Amanda. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. Actually, the next slide is what's on the, the mentor data anyway. Here's what we would need the logs to capture. Mm -hmm. So really just a who, what, where, when, why. Um, and you know, the, the purpose of this, again, is because this is a new program, we want to make sure we're, we're catching data at different points throughout the process so that um, if, if, if we need to circle back and say, hey, you know, um, you, know you, you said that, that in this case, the relationship wasn't quite doing what you needed it to. You know, how often were you actually meeting? Um, you know, how long were those, that kind of thing, um, it, it could help us figure out if we need to enhance any of our guidelines or, or anything like that. Right. right. Okay, so this is, this is an exciting part. So um, when we first conceived of the mentoring program, we kind of assumed we were going to have to manually match mentors and mentees together based on forms that they were going to fill out and different demographic data and all of this and um, and we were prepared to do that but since since our um, our the the discussion then in, in 2016 and, and kind of that pause that we hit we have found that there's an, an aspect of grant zone that will allow some of the matching to happen automatically almost kind of like a match.com model and we we vetted it um, we've, we've tested it out we think it's really going to work so what this tool is going to allow is for mentors and mentees to create profiles or to enhance their profiles inside of grant zone and then there will be some software that works behind the scenes to help them find each other based on perhaps geographic location uh, mentor strengths and mentee needs or mentor experience and mentee experience there's a lot of different factors that that, that and, and you can prioritize them so if a mentee were to indicate that they really would like someone to help them uh, with mentor them towards getting their GPC if somebody indicates in their mentor profile that they are a GPC then you know that there's a potential match there if a mentor profile like my mentor profile indicates that I am NOT a GPC because I haven't accomplished that yet so I probably wouldn't be matched with anybody who's looking to get their GPC unless they were okay with both of us struggling together and there could be some usefulness in that as well um, so I know I was kind of tickled with this um, just because it frees up members of our task force to focus on other aspects of this program and not just sitting down with a bunch of papers and trying to figure out who should who should be matched with who. 
So if we go to the next slide, Mickey. And I just was going to add, I mean, the other thing we have in there um, is like the SIGs, um, the um, special interest groups. So that helps connect people that are in the arts, for example, with other people that are in the arts. So we're integrating different parts of GPA, um, the GPA structure in this system, and we're able to do that so that um, you can connect with somebody that's in your grant industry or your grant specialization or, like Amanda said, a GPC or somebody that um, had their own consulting business, you know, and I think that's um, – I think that's really a strength of this of this program. Good point. So this what what we're seeing here is a, a screenshot. It's it's mostly a screenshot of a new part of Grant Zone, and this has just gone live within the past week. And so um, if you if you look across the top, there's the regular home communities directory browse participate help. There's a new tab there, and it's highlighted in red for mentoring and the the direct web web address for that is grantzone.grantprofessionals.org slash mentoring. And when you go there, um, it's going to prompt you to um, complete, like really complete your grant zone profile, and then move on to, um, there's two links here, enroll as mentor and enroll as mentee. So whether you want to become a mentor within the program or a mentee or both, uh, the process is going to be the same at this point. Um, so I've gone through this process myself just to kind of test it. Um, so when I clicked on Enroll as Mentor, uh, it, had, it took me through a very little survey. Um, I think it was maybe eight or nine questions, and it was just a way of setting up some, uh, answering some questions about communication preferences, and was I a GPC, and was I a CFRE, and, and a couple of other things like that. And then it helped me dig into what areas would I be comfortable mentoring other people in, I'm sure if I would, had gone through the Enroll as Mentee link, it would uh, ask people to respond to what areas they would um, hope to find some mentoring support. And so after you go through that, then there is a directory where you can um, perform some searches. And after you get through all that, the computer will do its little magic. And um, when there's enough people in the system, and that's another reason why we want to make sure we've got 10 mentors before we start enrolling any mentees, um, the matching can, can start to happen based on the responses that everyone has put into their profiles as they do this. Um, and so that that's just kind of on the process itself. Um, the next few slides are going to talk about specific education and support resources that are inside this module just for mentors. So, Mickey, do you have any anything about this process before we move on to that? No, I'm, I, I think it's pretty, I, I think you'll find it very easy to follow. We did um, when they, when he did the demo um, and Amanda, she alluded to, you know, go in and try it. And if you have any questions, um, Barb is always willing to answer questions as she always is. She's a great support for us. And, um, She's willing to answer questions about the grant zone. If you get hung up in something, she has lived this since it started. So she's been on our task force. She knows everything that we've discussed and what it took to get us to this point. And she was very instrumental in bringing Mentor Match to us, um, mm -hmm. which is, um, I, again, I, I can't emphasize enough, this was an investment um, from GPA in this program. So they truly believe this is a program worth investing in. So I, I, th I think it's, this is a good place to make that point as well. Yes, that's true. Yeah, it's, it's very easy to follow, very intuitive. I know I, I'm, I'm a little biased towards this sort of model because I met my husband on Yahoo Personals. So, oh. <laughs> you know, I'm just, wow. you know, I'll just put that out there, but you know, it's, it's sometimes it works. So yeah. anyway, anyway, so, so inside so now um, inside Grant Zone, if, if you're listening to this um, and you are already a member of Grant Zone, chances are good that you've already participated in some discussion boards and or you might be a member of one or more communities. I know we have uh, uh, different communities for the different special interest groups. Um, those are all built inside of Grant Zone. So there's two more communities that we've built. Um, actually. Mickey, could you go to the next slide? I think I got these out of order. All right. Okay. Nope. Back up one. Sorry, sorry. Stop there. Okay. 
So, so when you enroll as a mentor, um, you're going to be automatically added to two more communities. Um, and they're shown here. One of them is called GPA's Mentor Match Community. Um, and the other one is GPA's Mentors. Now, the first one of those is for everybody who's signed up to be a mentor or a mentee. And it's supposed to be a community where um, people can provide feedback on how the program is going, ask questions about the process, um, ask, you know, offer suggestions about how to make the program better, um, you know, interact with each other about, hey, I found this cool article about mentoring and everybody should read it, that kind of thing. The second one, um, the red arrow here, it says mentors only. And this is a, a closed community just for mentors. And inside of that, we are posting um, videos and training resources, and there will be additional discussion forums to provide kind of real-time and time-delayed support for anybody who's mentoring, particularly if you're doing this for the first time and you're maybe a little unsure about things. This is a space where you can post questions and get support from members of the task force and from your fellow mentors. So, and then Mickey, if you could back up one slide. There we go. So, for example, three webinars that we've already recorded and they are linked from within the resource library in the mentors only community. Um, these are all recorded by members of the task force, and they're on uh, different aspects of communication and keeping your discussions on track. So as you're developing this relationship and you're moving through the get to know you period with your mentees, um, if you if you find like you're you're floundering just a little bit, like I don't know I don't know how to ask this person questions to get to know them very well, or I always feel like like our discussions end up going off track. These are some resources that we've recorded and put just for you all to go to support you in this. Um, there will be accompanying discussion threads in Grant Zone. So for each of these three webinars, then we can talk about it more, you know, in a discussion forum. Um, and so we've, we've tried to anticipate some of the needs that mentors, you and, and mentors might have. So these are locked and loaded already. Uh, we'll be putting more things in in the weeks to come. And um, if anybody, as they're getting started as a mentor, feels like there's a resource or a topic where we need a resource and we don't have one, by all means, let us know, and we will get it into the library inside that mentors only community. Absolutely. Yep. OK. Um, go forward to, we did that one. So here's just a, a screenshot of that mentors only community. Um, you can see Mickey's already started a couple of discussion posts. Um, one of them is the difference between mentoring and co, I'm guessing coaching. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got the the shared files there. Barb has put those three uh, pre-recorded webinars, links to each of those. So that's what appears on the, the right hand side of this slide. So, um, you know, Across the top, discussions are threaded there. The library is there. And you can look and see um, you know, who are the members of this community. Right now, it, it's at least on this screenshot, it's showing nine. I think that's everybody in the task force. So if you've got a question for the task force, you can post it here. And somebody will you know, read it and get back to you in fairly short order. And again, this is um, the, the mentors community. Um, we are really, like we said, like Amanda was had had so wonderfully outlined um we tried to anticipate the needs but you guys are going to have to tell us if you want any any other support and we are more than happy to provide it um, we have wonderful resources um on our um on our task force molly bond um, is one that she she has i think she's getting her doctorate in mentoring um literally mm -hmm. she this, this is her job is um, designing mentoring programs and informing them, and she knows more. Uh, she has more knowledge in her um, than the rest of us have in our whole body, I think. But <laughs> she, is a, she has so much information on this. So I mean, literally, if you do need um, information, she's on this discussion, and I guarantee you she will respond and, and provide whatever you need. And the rest of us are committed to doing that as well. Yeah, so especially in these these early weeks of of getting this up and running, please please provide feedback or or let us know of needs um because like, you know, we we've 
tried to anticipate, but I know we probably missed something um, mm -hmm. in, in terms of some kind of topic where we can provide support. Right. Okay. So this is just a, you know, kind of a summary timeline of, of how we are planning, how we are launching this. Um, so here we are today. July 25th, we've got our two grant zone communities set up. We just talked about those. Uh, we've got our recorded training sessions for the mentors, which are in the GPA's mentors community. Those are those three on active listening, questioning, and keeping discussions on track. We are now start going to start recruiting mentees for the program, and, and the matching will begin. Well, I guess that'll happen after we have 10 mentors. Right, right. I take that back. Well, that'll happen after we have 10 mentors. We're, we're anticipating that once we get 10 mentors, it will not take long to start recruiting mentees. And so um, sometime in September, the mentoring activity, that getting to know you period um, would begin. And then um, in, in November the 10th uh, out in San Diego, we're gonna have the mentor mentee meetup. And I think we're also gonna have um, either in that session or next to it, in, in you know in an in an adjacent session, um, helping more people to sign up for this, you know we'll have some laptops available or something like that. Just to hey, are you interested in being a mentor or a mentee? You know, here's we'll walk you through the the sign up process and and help get some more people in the pipeline that way. If they've been thinking about it, maybe they've got some questions that they needed answered before they wanted to to sign up one way or another. Right. So. Um, it's kind of open-ended at this point. I know we've we've alluded to the six-month and the 12-month evaluation forms, and so I would anticipate that the first batch of six-month forms would be coming in sometime next spring. Um, you know, members of the task force will look at those once once we have a a, a number of them and and kind of take the temperature of where this is at and think about any any adjustments that might need made to be made. Oh my god, bad grammar, sorry. And then um and then uh about a year out, which would be roughly next summer, same thing, you know, those 12 year evaluation forms would probably be coming in um late summer, early fall of, of twenty eighteen. And we'll just kind of see how this goes. Um I, I don't know if that sounds wishy washy or not. We'll see how it goes. But it's <laughs> it's exciting, but it's it we're gonna need to see how it goes. Yeah, and, and like we said, this is really, we consider this a pilot period. I mean, this, this yeah. really is um, the time when we can uh, try it and see if the mentor-mentee relationship works, see if, if the higher logic product works, um, see if it does what it's intended to do, see if we're meeting the outcomes. If we're not meeting the outcomes, then we need to do something to adjust. So this is like any program that you try at your organization or that your clients try at their organizations, um, it's never perfect the first, first time you put it out. So um we're we're very ready to to try to make adjustments as needed um but our hope is that this is going to provide at least 90 95 percent of what you need as a member and uh, as a mentor and and uh we'll get to 100 percent when we get your feedback so um just yep. before we before we take questions um you know i'm i'm counting the number of people besides Nikki and Barb and myself who are on this, I think I see seven. So I want to say to all of you who are listening in on this, um, thank you for mm -hmm. attending this webinar and thank you for helping with this pilot. Um, I, I guarantee you that there will be at least one little hiccup somewhere along the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and so um, just because it's new. And so I, I thank you for helping us work through that. and. Um, every every piece of feedback that you as a as a first round mentor here can provide to us is going to help us make this better the next year and the year after that and the year after that. Yes, and I'd like to say thank you as well. I'm we and I'm I'm looking forward to people uh, viewing the the recorded um, the recording of this as well. And if you're if you're listening to the recording, sign up to become a mentor. I mean, I think this is a great way to give back to GPA and to the grants profession. And Jody, I loved your uh, your comment. Thank you so much. I remember you from from St. Louis. Um, and I think uh, yeah, she's been in it for the whole time. Oh, something just happened there. I'm not sharing my screen. I don't think. That's okay. I'll pass it back over to you, Mickey. Hold on just a second. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I just want to echo what Amanda said. I really appreciate everybody taking the time to listen to this and, and consider the program because I think it is a very valuable benefit for GPA members. 
in a lot of ways. And we will also take any, any questions that anybody has. All right, if you have any questions, go ahead and you can either put them in the chat box or um, you can unmute your line or raise your hand and I can unmute your line. Um, Jody Samuels did put a couple comments in the chat box that says, I'm participating in a mentoring program that began in October 2015 and my mentee is in Washington, D.C. We've, we've definitely made it work with monthly meetings by a phone. Uh, one Skype meeting to start so we could see each other, and we've also managed to meet up two times in person. Um, it's oh, been a wonderful, gratifying experience. Awesome. Oh, yeah, and she's in Sacramento. Oh, wow. It is a long-distance relationship. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, we're very fortunate in this uh, day and age to have such great resources. Um, I work with clients all over the country, and it constantly amazes me, even the new technology that comes out every day, how we're able to connect with each other. So um, I think that's really important. So I went ahead and actually unmuted all the lines. So if you do have any questions, go ahead and feel free to um, ask them. Quiet group. If we were in a room, I'd be shutting the door right now and saying, I'm not letting you all leave until I get at least one question. <laughs> well, we must have done a great job, hopefully. We, we, we stunned them into silence. We did. There you go. <laughs> all right. Well, then I want to thank Mickey and Amanda for leading today's webinar and uh, for all their work on the task force. Uh, we would not be where we are today without um, both of them helping lead this task. Um, uh, it has, as I said, been a couple years in planning, but it, it's great to see that it's finally um, ready to launch and go. Um, if you do have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out to in, any of us. Um, we are happy to answer any questions. Um, Mickey and Amanda are the best options for, you know, mentoring program kind of topics where I would be more of the person for um, the uh, Great Zone community and assigning yourself up and anything no, actually, to do with logistics. Actually, we had one more slide about yeah. next steps. I oh, <laughs> okay. it? Yeah. Um, okay. If, 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 we could, if we could just display that. Um, I, yeah. I've got it right now. Okay. Am I showing it? Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah, um, so um, the, the next thing you want to do if you are interested in being a, a mentor is to visit that Grant Zone uh, mentoring page and enroll as a mentor. Which we I'm not seeing about. the slide. I'm not Thank you. Go ahead and bring it back up. I've I'll got it up on my screen. You'll have to reshare your screen for some reason. It got passed over to somebody else. Okay, just a minute. Um, I don't know how I share my screen. Well, let me just talk through. I'll just talk through those last, those next steps because I have no idea how to share my screen at this point. Um, so basically, the next steps are to to join that mentoring, uh, that mentor match community, and um, enroll as a mentor. Uh, check out the resource library and watch those pre-recorded webinars and rewatch this webinar if you need to 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 really get a feel for the way things are going to go. Um, stay tuned. For Updates. I know Shelly Wales has put out some updates as well as Barb and, and different people in Grant Zone. And, and make sure to keep your eye open for any uh, new news about the mentoring community. Hopefully, uh, we'll have 10 mentors um, very, very quickly. And when we do, we will definitely, there we go, um, we will definitely make that happen. Um, we will definitely get some mentees to go along with that. Um, and then you will be notified by email when a mentee requests to be matched with you. Um, so it's very easy to see mentors and mentees in that mentor match community. They've got little badges. Um, I think you saw them on one of the previous slides. So um, you'll be able to see who's a mentor and who's a mentee. And when you do get a request for a match, you can decide to take it or not take it. 
um, each one is very, um, could be applicable. Um, so again, like Barb said, if there's any technical or grandson questions, call Barb or uh, email Barb. And then if there's any general questions, feel free to post it to the discussion, uh, the, the discussion thread in the mentor uh, community, and we will be happy to get right on that. And let's see here. That was that was really the last slide. You know, yeah, it was. we've we've got Steven Spielberg here saying that you're all awesome and that this is going to be fantastic. That was the last slide. So, and we like it when he says that. So yeah, yeah, he's a nice guy. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so no, if there's no other questions, uh, thank you all for joining us. We really appreciate it, and let's make this mentoring program work.